directed by Kim Joo Won, Bloodhound starring Woo Do Won, Lee Sang Yi, Park Sang Wung, and Hoo Jon Ho is finally released on Netflix. As the key drama releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to talk about the series, explain the ending, and discuss all the hidden details. But before that, a spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the show. But if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. The series starts by introducing us to Kim Gun Woo, a sincere boxer who is following his passion and helping his mother with his earnings. He goes out of his way to help others and everyone around him appreciates his kind gestures. Due to the COVID-19 and his divorced father's inconsiderate decisions, his family business is on the brink of closing down. But Gun Woo is determined to help his mother with everything he's got. Then we meet Kim Myung Gil who is introduced to us as a kind moneylender as he agrees to help an under construction hotel in this dire state, but his real motivations are hidden under his gentle face. The loan shark targets people with massive bank loans and promises them a lower interest rate. However, once they sign the necessary document, he extorts money from the unfortunate people by threatening to acquire their possessions or businesses. Gun Woo's mother is unaware of that, so she along with some other simple-minded small Small business owners sign up for the program. At first, they cover the individual bank loan, later they suck interest money from the poor and powerless people. In the meantime, we are introduced to Hong Woo Jin, who is a hell of a boxer, and he meets Gun Woo for the first time in the ring. Their rivalry quickly turns into friendship, and they bond over their shared experience of their previous marine life. Woo Jin's father was a national level boxer who got the bronze medal in the Olympics, and he hates his son for not having as great skills in the game as him. Also, their friendship gets even stronger with their shared love for the sport, yet their personalities are miles away from one another like Pacquiao and Mayweather away. On the other hand, the series introduces us to President Choi, a legendary figure in the private loan industry. He along with his granddaughter runs a loan organization, but unlike Myungil, he is a kind-hearted man who helps the people in need and mostly receives the interest with their smiling faces. As his granddaughter has to do the dirty work for him, he is looking for a bodyguard who can keep her safe. Yeonju is not actually his granddaughter, but she was one of the kids who was raised in his orphanage, and later he practically adopted her and since then has been raising her as his protege. Myungil is not just a loan shark, but he is trying to spread his influence to the political sector and manipulate people with connections to do his biddings. When he gets to know that Gunwoo's mother is unable to pay her debt, he sends a group to intimidate her. Though Gun Woo comes and defeats most of them, it seems his skills are not as useful in front of Myung Il's number one henchman Byo, so he takes a huge beating. Myung Il asks him to join his group, but when Gun Woo refuses, the cunning man puts a scar on his cheek. After getting beaten up by the thugs, Gun Woo goes looking for a job and with Woo Jin's connections, he comes across President Choi who gets really impressed by his demeanor and hires him to become a bodyguard for Yunju. At first, she is hesitant to hire him and Woo Jin, but when she learns about Myung Gil's company's involvement, she quickly puts them to a task. She has been looking into his company for a long time and she found a shady syndicate that dresses up like homeless people, steals the IDs of the actual ones and uses them to borrow money from the loan shark and never returns it to them, creating a deficit in the age-old business. They come across one such incident when the group convinces one homeless person to give his ID in exchange for a job. While doing so, they come across a man they have already conned and tries to beat him up, but Gunwo intervenes. Meanwhile, Myungil is visited by Mr. Hong and his cousin who is a cop. He threatens the antagonist with his life and asks him to keep his distance from his family. Anyway, Myung Il's gang members locate the base of operations and President Choi is shocked after finding that it is Myung Il behind all the scams. He cautions Hyun Ju about the man and we get to see that once Myung Il used to work under Choi. He along with Byom tried to steal from him as he dismissed them from work. While fighting with Choi, Myung Il received a scar on his face and Byom threw him out from several floors high. Since then, Choi became paraplegic. 
In the present time, Myung Gil's henchman threatens Mr. Hong and manages to get a compromising image of the businessman. Meanwhile, Yeonju, Wu Jin, and Gun Woo tell Jai Myung, but they are unaware that they are walking into a trap. We also learn about Myung Gil's actual plans, that is, he wants to acquire the entire building that Hong is constructing. After learning the identity of Gunwoo, Jae Myung was sent to his place to kidnap his mother. But Yan Jung, a renowned knifer of Choi's previous gang, comes to her rescue and saves the old woman. The trio also manages to beat the beep out of their attackers, though Do Young, another accomplice of Choi, comes to their aid. It seems he has nothing more to add than dealing with the leftovers. All of them, including Gunwoo's mother, meet at Choi's place. Meanwhile, Myung Il tells the story to his employees about how they killed Choi's entire knife gang, except the two. He is genuinely scared of the knifer duo, and Choi and his team planning to move out from Choi's establishment. They choose Yeonju, Woo Jin, and Gunwoo to move the money, but right after getting out, they get attacked by Byom and Jung Do. While Woo Jin and Gunwoo beat up Byom, Yeonju deals with the other guy. As they are getting out of the building, they get attacked by an armada of Myung Il's men, and in the confrontation, Yeonju's inherited card is busted. With Gunwoo's help, they manage to escape, and the next day onward, they start getting training from the veterans. They decide to kidnap Jung Do and kill Kim Jun Min. They torture Jung Do and Choi makes him spill out information about Myung Il's business. He confesses his role in the crime syndicate and how Myung Il is blackmailing people using the compromising photos that Jung Do and Byom took forcefully. They also learn that Byom is the only man Myung Il trusts since his prison days and Choi feels disheartened after learning about the lengths Myung Il can go to achieve his goals. Yeonju is disturbed after witnessing the torture session and it seems she is trying to distance herself from the bloody business. After getting everything they want from Jung Do, they let him go with a new identity and help him relocate outside of South Korea. Myung Il blackmails Hong's cousin and tracks down the location of the culprits who ruined his operations momentarily. At first, he goes to Do Young's place and blackmails him with his pregnant wife to reveal Yan Jung's location, and later kills him. He then sneaks up on the sashimi chef and surprises him with his armor jacket and shoe knives. He kills the knifer as well, and it is highly possible that he has killed Yan Jung's wife too. When Gun Woo and Yeon Joo go out to drop their mother at Choi's orphanage, the vicious gang gets to Choi's place and stabs Woo Jin severely. With Byung's intervention, Myung Il is finally able to kill his longtime enemy President Choi. By the time Gun Woo and Yeon Joo get there, it's too late as the gang left the place burning after stealing all of Choi's hard-earned possessions. Gun Woo takes Woo Jin to the hospital and begs the doctors to save his friend's life. It's been months since the disastrous day, Yeonju now lives in Rome and Woo Jin along with Gun Woo moved in with Mr. Oh, another accomplice of President Choi in the countryside. They train hard and decide to get back to take down Myung Il. However, none of the loan sharks are interested to collaborate, so they get to Hong and his cop cousin. The duo tell them about the hard drive of Myung Il and the security measures they learned from Jung Do, and Hong decides to collaborate in order to get back to Myung Il for the countless insults and humiliations he received from the heinous loan shark. They take help from some of their cop friends and as the signing of the building is being done, the cops hack into Myung Il's phone which triggers a security measure and his hard drive is destroyed. But the lead duo are not happy with the outcome and they want to get to Myung Il's hidden stash as well. Meanwhile, Myung Il appoints a cop to help him in this star state. It seems after Jung Do went missing, Myung Il hired a new cop to help him with his operations. Myung Il then dispatches his men to find Mr. Oh and the pair then meet with their informant who provides them with further information that will assist them in apprehending the crime boss. When the grandpa's granddaughter discovers that he has been abducted, she insists on accompanying them since she knows how to fire arrows. They also enlist the help of Moon Gwang Mu to save the grandfather. They arrive at the location, engage in a full-blown battle and beat the thugs. They eventually take two people with them including Kang and Byom. They interrogate one of the men and discover that the grandpa is in a barn, but by the time they reach there, he is moved. Myung Il, having learned of the latest development, launches an attack on the prosecutor, the hacker and his right-hand man, nearly killing all of them. Ming Gang Yong gets poisoned, but he vomits and saves himself. Myung Il then summons the duo to get the grandfather, and the granddaughter joins them again. They start fighting and while they beat up the guys, Myung Il becomes angry and aims a knife at Mr. Oh, but he is suddenly wounded with an arrow, so he flees from the location and the old man is finally saved. 
Jangdo assist the guys by supplying them with vital information in exchange for some more money in order to apprehend Myungil. With his info, they board a Vietnam bound ship. Wu Jin goes up against Biom and manages to beat him up. In the meantime, Gunwo beats the beep out of the crime lord. As Myungil will land in Vietnam, the Interpol will intervene and capture him. Mr. Hong meets Gunwo and Wu Jin aboard his boat as he helps them return to their destination. The amount of recovered gold is huge, so they want him to create a fund in Mr. Choi's name since it is what he requested. He then has them each two gold bars and promises to contribute the same amount he gave them. They are grateful. Finally, Kim Gun Woo phones his mother and visits her at the orphanage. They embrace each other after a long time, and the series comes to a happy ending. Unlike most of the Netflix shows, this one is not overly complicated but is an example of simple done right. The fight sequences were awesome, the characters and the bromance between the boxer duo were really fun to watch. Though the toner shift at the end seems a bit uncanny, but with everything considered, the show worked really well for me. However, some characters get forgotten by the end of the series, and I think some of them deserve a proper closure. Since Glory K drama fans have been waiting for a good show from Netflix to root for, well, here it is. In addition to that, the fight sequences deserve great appreciation. Hey, 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 thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Bloodhounds on Netflix. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you at the next one. And for the time being, we are signing off. Anoi Gaseo, only the Loon Sharks are having a blast, and I'll be back.